Signori, buonasera. Welcome to New York University, Casa Italiana, Zerilli Marimont. I've been looking forward to this moment to have my halo back, <laughs> signaling my sanctity in dealing with the restrictive measures that NYU has enforced in a way that is more draconian than any other institution in New York City. Uh, today is the first day of spring. The sun is shining. Our little garden is in full bloom in honor of the minister. And today, Casa opens its doors for its first high-profile in-person event, albeit limited to members of our academic community only, that I welcome here with great pleasure, since the start of this two years long winter. Today, for the first time, we also welcome the permanent representative of Italy to the UN, Ambassador Maurizio Massari, and the Consul General of Italy in New York, Minister Fabrizio Di Michele. We've already had several occasions to meet with them and their staff, and I'm pleased to be able to say that we can count on two good friends and allies, both at the UN headquarters and up on Park Avenue. Thank you. Today we have, in particular, the pleasure and the honor of welcoming to New York University and to Casa Italiana the Minister for Equal Opportunities and Families of Italy, Elena Bonetti. And we are equally delighted that we are able to reopen our doors with her Lectio Magistralis on the Italian perspective on equal opportunities and equal rights. Minister Bonetti, your visit here today, like the visit of many of your predecessors in government over more than 32 years of activity, is an important sign of the strategic value that Italy attaches to the promotion of its culture abroad. Casa Italiana Zerilli Marimò as part of an American university, of the largest private American university, has become a protagonist in the cultural dialogue between our two countries. This institution is the product of the generosity, vision, and hard work of a woman, of an Italian woman from Lombardy, like you, our beloved founder, Baroness Mariuccia Zerilli Marimò. Before becoming a cultural entrepreneur and a benefactor of culture and the arts in all their forms here in New York, the Baroness led an intense life in Italy, supporting her husband, pharmaceutical entrepreneur Guido Zerilli, one of the leading figures of the industrial reconstruction of post-World War II Italy and its ensuing economic miracle. And in her own right, as a leader of ANDE, Associazione Nazionale Donne Elettrici, an association established after World War II to advocate for the full participation of women in the democratic process. Just a few minutes ago, a few blocks from here, you, Minister Bonetti, paid homage to the victims of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire that happened on March 25, 1911. So 110 years Friday, this coming Friday. A tragedy that saw the death of more than 140 people, most of them women workers, and many of them of Italian origin, especially Sicilian. The tragedy was a wake-up call for New York and the US. Thanks to the sacrifice of those young women, America became more aware of the inhuman working conditions common at the time and of the systematic exploitation of women in the workplace. 111 years have since gone by much has been accomplished and much remains to be achieved. But your presence here today as representative of the Italian government is also the result of the civic passion and activism of Italian women like the Ande, Donne Elettrici, and the Italian American women of previous generations. And now just two words for all of you to introduce the minister. She's a professor of mathematics at the University of Milan and for many years, she was a leader in the Italian Scout movement. She was appointed Minister for Equal Opportunities in the Family in the Second Conte government in 2019, and was confirmed to the same position by the current Prime Minister, Mario Draghi. Her main accomplishment as Minister, we can say, has been the approval of the Family Act, a comprehensive group of measures to support families from childcare to educational expenses and much more. She is also the founder of Women for a New Renaissance, a task force aimed at fostering inclusion of women in traditionally male-dominated fields. Please welcome Minister Elena Bonetti.
So, distinguished colleagues and guests and dear students, let me start by expressing my deepest gratitude to the NYU for the warm welcome granted to me today. And a special thanks to Professor Stefano Bertini, director of the Casa Italiana Zerilli Marimo, for his kind invitation to join you here today. As a minister, but especially as a professor, I am deeply honored to be in this prestigious university. It has been a while since my last lecture, and um, I must admit that I feel as excited as emotional about it. We live in crucial times for humanity. We have experienced, and we are still experiencing, one of the most difficult crises in our history, the pandemic, with all its economic and social repercussions. And now, a new war broke out. We cannot look away. I want to seize this opportunity to express Italy's full solidarity to all women and girls living in conflict, especially to the women and girls of Ukraine. They are facing the fallout of the unprovoked and unjustified Russian aggression with courage and resilience. The Italian government, we will do whatever it takes to support and to help them. Every child, every woman, and every man deserves to live free. Universal human rights have to be safeguarded everywhere in the world. It is our duty. We have the responsibility to bring new hope and to build a better future for all. I firmly believe that universities can play a pivotal role in shaping a time of new renaissance for our societies. Our work is guided by three key words, research, education, and dialogue. They are crucial for the whole society. It is our responsibility to unlock their potential to build a better future and pave the way for a more inclusive, resilient, and sustainable development. It is high time to acknowledge the university's foundational contribution to implementing the so-called Building Back Better Plan. Universities are hereby seen as workshops where the future is shaped, where students and professors together can devise and forge the society we aspire to. It is where we can make our dreams come true. Nowadays, this is more relevant than ever. The pandemic has shaken our way of life to the core, caused chaos, undermined many of our certainties, and shifted our priorities. We all have suffered its consequences personally and in our daily life. On the other hand, if we consider the bigger picture and look at our, our cities, our countries, how the entire world have been impacted, we realize that imbalances and inequalities have become even more blatant consequently. Unquestionably, inequalities are an obstacle to the full achievement of a global development. To this point, I would like to share my perspective as a researcher. As a professor of mathematical analysis, I study differential models to describe damage and adhesion through the phase transitions approach. These models describe how cohesive bonds at a microscopic level are responsible for materials macroscopic reaction to external forces. If these bonds are weak, the entire system is fragile. By this analogy to mathematical analysis, we can see that our model of society has proven, has proven to be fragile in the face of a systemic crisis. Our social cohesion was too weak. The bonds were too weak. So the question is, how can we fix this weakness? And the answer is clear. 
To increase our resilience and our capacity to tackle new challenges, we must enhance the cohesion within our communities. We must remove inequalities that hinder the full development of our society. We cannot grow if we leave someone behind. Inequalities must be removed not only to achieve a fairer society, but also to better our lives. Gender inequality, which stands out among said inequalities, prevents women from expressing their full potential. Each and every untapped potential and talent of women is a lost contribution to the global development. We are all aware that women have been the most impacted by the pandemic. They are those who experienced more significant job losses and were the most exposed to the virus due to the overrepresentation among frontline workers. Globally, women account for 70% of the healthcare workforce, and during the pandemic, they have taken on even more domestic and paid care responsibilities, devoting time to family and household care three times more than men. An even more alarming data comes in with regards to gender-based violence. National restrictions enforced in most countries have triggered an increase in violence against women, particularly domestic violence and violence at work. Violence against women in any shape and form is a violation of women's fundamental rights and a serious obstacle to their independence and empowerment. On the other hand, we have all experienced the courage, resilience, and talents women can bring to the table. We must tap into all women and girls' potential to turn this time of crisis into a source of new opportunities for all. This is why the Italian government has promoted the first national strategy for gender equality. The underlying vision is clear. We want Italy to become a country where people of all genders, ages, and from all backgrounds have the same opportunities for personal and professional development and growth, where everyone has equal access to top education and employment, where there are no more gaps in income or dignity, where all men and women can release their potential, confident that equality is guaranteed with no compromises. This is the phase of a modern country which is ready to face the challenges ahead. It is the same vision that I have identified in the US national strategy on gender equity and equality, in particular in uh, this passage. Ensuring that all people have the opportunity to live up their full potential, regardless of gender identity or other factors, is not only a moral imperative, it is a strategic imperative that will advance prosperity, stability, and security at home and abroad in the years to come. The two strategies have singled out the same priorities to act and to promote women's empowerment in all the sectors of our society. The Italian strategy in particular rests upon five pillars, work, income, skills, work-life balance, and power. A, a first crucial priority is to promote women's participation in the job market with special attention to the attainment of work-family balance. The strategy introduces measures to promote an equal division of rights and duties between genders. Quality, affordable, and widespread early childhood care is a prerequisite as recognized by the next generation EU plan that has been funding this project. The Family Act, the reform of the Family Act, is inspired by the same ideals. It is the first structural and integrated reform of family policies that I promoted to implement investments in education, women and youth empowerment. 
it simultaneously aims to counter the concerning drop in birth rate that Italy has been experiencing for years. The Family Act also pursues the reform of parental leave being extended to all professional categories, as well as a mandatory and structural paternity leave. It also envisages the introduction of incentives for women's employment, reductions for care services, and the promotion of flexible work. Another crucial pillar of the strategy for gender equality is education. The goal is fostering girls' interest in the, stud, in the study of STEM subjects. Universities must be committed to this objective. We need a cultural change. We need to encourage girls and young women to believe that they can become whoever they want and they, that they achieve any goal they set their mind to, just as their male counterparts. The wide range of actions encompassed by the strategy includes the introduction of advanced courses in STEM disciplines, the funding of public scholarships for girls in STEM fields, the update of university courses to promote women's access to STEM professions. We ultimately want to dismantle all gender-related stereotypes. This task becomes even more urgent against the backdrop of ecological transition, of the ongoing fight against climate change, and on our quest for sustainable development. We must prevent these fields from becoming dominated by men, thus allowing women to be agents of change also in scientific and technical sectors. Science needs women creativity, talents and passion. This is why we need to invest in STEM education for girls and young women and help them become leaders in this field. The strategy indeed is devised to boost women's leadership in the public and private sectors and to favor an equitable access to top e executive and leadership roles in the political, economic, social and cultural spheres. Equal gender representation is thus encouraged to the creation of a large talent pool. By promoting women's leadership, women and girls can truly become agents of change and drive the future of our societies. The solidity of democracies depends on an inclusive and sustainable development where women can take on decision-making roles and leadership positions, not because they are better than men, but as President von der Leyen said, because women are different. Full democracy is made possible by the added value women can bring to the equation. This is the why gender equality and women's empowerment must be pursued by the international community as a cross-cutting priority of the global transformative agenda. This transformative global agenda requires is premised on multilateral coordination achieved through effective agreements at both national and international level. This is one of the main commitments laid out in the final statement by the leaders of last year G20 summit. During its presidency, Italy for organized a ministerial conference that for the first time was entirely devoted to women's empowerment and gender equality, a topic at the heart of all ministerial meetings. Our Italian strategy also encompasses all of government actions to foster the cultural change we need. Here are a few examples. The inclusion of a gender mainstreaming approach for all policies. The increase of gender-related budgeting the introduction of gender-based impact assessment for every legislative initiative, the promotion of role models that help debunk stereotypes, the introduction of incentives for companies that promote gender equality policies 
also through a reform of public procurement and the introduction of a gender equality certificate for companies. These are all measures aimed to boost women's empowerment through effective and structural policies. Let me conclude by saying that really it is time to remove stereotypes and to dismantle all the barriers that prevent women from expressing their full potential. It is time to act with vision, method, and courage. Together, we can achieve our goals because together we are dreamers, we are concrete in our actions, and we are brave. Today, we run the risk of going back to an obsolete narrative and a skewed vision which looks at the reality only through the lens of the male perspective, even if uh, women are the true protagonists of today's society. There is a great opportunity to transform this time into a kairos. This opportunity arises when women and men join forces and share the burden of the responsibilities ahead of us as a community when they take on their co-responsibility to the future of our nation and international communities. However, we cannot move forward without women's contribution to rethink, plan, and build the future. The time to act is now, so let us start together to change our present and reshape our future, a better future for all. Thank you very much for your attention. Do we have time for uh, some questions? Thank you very much for summarizing a lot of your uh, action in this government and in the previous one. And uh, there is time for questions. So if you have questions, you want to think about them, uh, you can either write them on a piece of paper and Chiara is going to collect them, or if you want to ask it, we have a microphone for you and you can ask it directly. Um, I'll start, first of all, mentioning that uh, there is a person here that I want to recognize. You said that one of the points is encourage young women to uh, take up study in the STEM sector. Yeah. And I think here we have a great role model here at New York University, uh, a professor who has just, been, uh, just received the highest honor that NYU can bestow to one of his professors. She will be induced officially uh, in a couple of weeks, I believe, and it's Maria Cristina Alberini, a neuroscientist here at New York University from Italy. She was born and educated not far from where the minister was born. Yeah. There must be something in the water. <laughs> and, uh, and I want to congratulate her for becoming a silver professor and for her groundbreaking work in the field of neurosciences. Please give her a round of applause. <laughs> And while you think about your question, uh, I have several. I start with one. Um, you said that one of the five, two of the five pillars of the Family Act are one, to increase the participation of women in the workforce. There are still many obstacles for their full participation. And another one is also to increase the birth rate. Is there a contradiction? Because normally people that uh, are worried about uh, birth rates say, well, women should be given the possibility to stay home and not go to work. Is, how did you come to the conclusion that the two things are not contradictory, but one can help the other? So thank you for this question. <laughs> because it, it is exactly the point. Uh, in Italy, for many years, we promoted a cultural model in which uh, women had uh, to choose if uh, they wanted to become mothers or to dedicate herself to the professional career. And uh, the result has been that uh, we are in the lowest part in the ranking of Europe, in the lowest part, uh, both uh, regarding the rate of the employment of women and uh, for the rate of birth. So, uh, 
there was something wrong in the model, let me say. <laughs> and uh, uh, indeed, for instance, you look at uh, French policies in which they, they uh, got a good results, both concerning the employment of women in the labor forces and concerning the rate of birth. Uh, they introduced uh, policies uh, integrating the aspects uh, to promote uh, women's role in the labor market, in the society, and at the same time to invest in family policies. So the new idea of the Family Act is exactly this one, to invest and mm, to foster uh, women freedom to become both mother and workers, if they want to be, and uh, to promote uh, new integrated policies uh, to mm, support, to foster the presence of women in the labor market, but at the same time to guarantee them uh, through services and also uh, rules in the labor market to be mother and uh, works. So how to do uh, this? Uh, first, uh, the, the, uh, the investment in educational services, in particular early childhood services, is a, a crucial point. Then we have also to uh, give incentives to company to hire women and to uh, also to, let me say, to promote uh, the, uh, the, the experience of the maternity as a, a part of the career, as a part in which also there are good results for uh, uh, implementing soft skills, uh, for instance, for women. And then uh, this, the third point is uh, uh, a reform of the parental leave to introduce a gender, a, 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 a balance equi equity also in families, in particular concerning the sharing of a burden, uh, educational burden. So the parental leave for mother and father is a crucial point also for the Family Act. Thank you. Um, one issue is that when we talk about Italian family in this country, it is normally associated with values that are not that good, that positive. There's an expression, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, uh, definitely my colleague, historian, friend David Forgas, is the idea of amoral fam feminism, is that what it's called? That it was introduced by especially American scholars. The, the, the idea that the presence of the family is so radicated that it becomes an absolute priority that justifies also some distortions, including a lack of allegiance to the state, to the larger community, so a very negative vision of what the family has represented for Italian history and a sort of a, a break instead of an accelerator for development. And then there is obviously the case of uh, uh, family capitalism that is basically the backbone of uh, Italian, um, the Italian industrial system. You know, almost all of the great uh, factory or the great industrial complex are based on a family. What kind of family model do you see, aside from what you did in the Family Act, but more like philosophically, what is the concept of family that you envision for the future that might uh, put the minds of Americans at ease? Is it still going to be amoral feminism? Is it no, a I, different concept? I think that uh, uh, the model is uh, uh, the, the idea, the inspiration of our constitution uh, so uh, a family is a community where people um, are in good relation. You, you have, uh, in the family, you have exactly the diversity which becomes uh, a community. Uh, there is a relation between gender and generations. And so uh, the, the idea of the individual that uh, uh, the individual uh, man or woman who becomes uh, a person, so uh, who builds a relation, who lives in relation with other people, and so where the solidarity, uh, con the sharing of uh, experiences becomes a way to build the social behavior of, uh, of everybody. And uh, in this vision, I think that during the pandemic, we experienced how family, how families uh, represent the, let me say, 
the mm, strongest part of our society. Italy uh, is made by small communities and families are these small communities, but not as individual agents, individual community, but as a part of a network. Uh, so uh, the, the new challenge is to connect people to the connection also of families in the society. And the vision uh, embodied by the Family Act is exactly this vision, to invest in relations, to invest in the education, to uh, make uh, new investments uh, in the role of women and men to contribute uh, to the well-being of uh, uh, each other. But also this point is a point of our constitu constitution, is the Article 4. We have the duty to contribute to the well-being of our society. And the family, I think that um, the families embody exactly this duty. And your question is connected to this idea of family. You just now mentioned that it's a, it's a community that brings together differences to create something else. Um, in the family act, I think one of the very delicate points was what defines a family. And that there is no definition of family because it was a very delicate point that within the government there were different ideas of what, especially regarding gender. And you got away with it, basically focusing on children. So yes. the idea is that the, the whole exactly. family act revolves around children, correct? Exactly, because I think that to promote effective policies for um, useful for the life of uh, families, of women, men, girls and boys, we do not uh, need uh, to define a family. We need uh, to uh, promote uh, effective policies for families. And uh, if you want to, we wanted to, mm, to give uh, more support, uh, for instance, from the economic point of view to families, we defined a new allowance, a monthly allowance, the Assegno Unico Universale, with the idea that each child is a value for our society. And so the allowance is dedicated to the child, to any uh, children of our society, because they are citizens. And so to make policy. So let's say children of single mothers, of uh, traditional male, female families, but also of, let's say, the new in family any, in any in kind, any. In any kind of families, because it, it is dedicated to children. So uh, we have no differences and the, uh, uh, regarding the, the kind of the family, but also uh, it, it is proportionate, the amount of the allowances depends on the economic status of the family. But uh, we do not distinguish between, for instance, different workers. Um, uh, Previously, the policies uh, depending, depended on uh, uh, the, the category of the professionals of the parents. So if you were uh, an autonomous worker, you didn't get anything. So now this is uh, the uh, universal idea to invest in, uh, in child care, also in child care. And so to help, uh, proportionally to the income yeah. and the... Uh, not only to the income, also the patrimonial status. And the kind of, yeah. Very good. I don't want to monopolize the conversation. It's open. So yes, we have a question there. If we can bring a microphone. Just wait a second. It's going to come right to you. Maybe uh, first introduce yourself, uh, say your name, and where you study here. Then where you, I assume that you're all. Yes, um, I, my name is Gianluca Generoso. I interviewed the minister a while ago for my podcast. I am an MBA student at Stern. MBA student, very good. And um, thank you so much for being here. Sorry for the logistics of the microphone. Um, but um, I have a question uh, around the fact that recently um, there was like this announcement around the uh, most negative record for births in Italy under 400,000. We are experiencing re record rates of immigration from our youth. I mean, it's an example probably of many of us uh, here today. Um, and at the same time, uh, record day, um, rates for, for um, death, like obviously associated also with COVID. So my question is, we are basically, from a perspective, getting like an older shrinking uh, country. 
And I appreciate all the effort that you have made during your tenure, uh, especially with the Family Act, to counteract this. Do you think we are doing enough in the long term to change this uh, trend? Thank you. Maybe you want to mention your blog while you're at it. Ah, no, it's a podcast. It's called Pub del Lunedì Sera. What is it called? Il Pub del Lunedì Sera. Il Pub del Lunedì Sera. Yeah. Thank you. We, we had the pleasure to host the minister twice. So. Thank you. Uh, I, I do not know. Possibly any, let me say that any law is not sufficient, but it is necessary. So what I mean is that it is the first step forward and that we activate a new process. The Family Act wants to activate and to uh, boost a change in our society, uh, giving a perspective to the future. So the, the, the main idea, the main vision is that uh, a, a young woman, a young man may find in Italy, in our country, the place where their dream can become true, can be transformed in a project of a life and uh, where all the society is committed to help them to, to build and to make this dream a reality. And this concerning uh, the, the choice to become parents, but at the same time to invest in, in some projects for uh, their growth, for their education, new jobs. Uh, so uh, a new country in which each woman and each man may find the, the place where the opportunity is not only guaranteed, but it is a, a path to, to uh, where to where to, to act uh, and to, to find other people dedicated to the same project. So um, it is clear that uh, uh, for this reason, uh, we needed to introduce new policies with a um, vision, a long-term vision of uh, effects. So Family Act will not uh, have uh, the results that, in a one year or two years, but it is the first step to have good results, stable results for the future. So, and this, uh, the fact that we decided to uh, integrate five, di five different pillars, so uh, financial support, educational support, reform of parental leaves, investment in uh, women's employment, and also investment in, uh, for young uh, autonomous life and the protagonism, the five pillars together make, represent really a change for the society. Thank you. Do you have other questions? Yes. Uh, thank you so much for a wonderful lecture. Uh, I have a question about the education part. I see education as a second family. Beyond the family, we belong to the education system. They shape our brains and behaviors for the rest of our life, all of these parts. So what is, can you expand a little bit on the plans for the education, please? Yes. Uh, we, uh, let me say that uh, the, the vision, uh, okay, I, 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 it is not uh, the same meaning in the translation, is to build an educating community. It is the vision of the so-called Comunità Educante. That means that all the society, all the society uh, has a, a crucial role in growing and in education. You know that, sorry for the interruption. There is a, 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 an expression in American English yeah? that became also the title of a book, I believe, by Hillary Clinton. It's called It Takes a Village. Okay, it yes, sir. To we, raise to a educate, case, yes, educate, sir. We need that. Yes, it is an old... Uh, yes. uh, we need a village to, to educate, to, to grow children, exactly. We are trying to, to build this village, okay, where the next generation, the young generation, are at the center of the efforts of everyone. And so uh, in the Family Act, the vision is that uh, families have a great responsibility 
to grow children, but they have to be supported by the whole community from a financial point of view, but also to ensure services, places, and uh, also improvement of the so-called non-formal education, which is one of the most, uh, um, let me say, sound uh, tool to empower young people to become protagonists of their life and to, to have the courage to dream and to find places where the dream can, uh, can be made reality. And starting from uh, very, very young uh, children. And uh, this is the reason why I think that STEM subjects may play a crucial role, not only because mathematics will be the language of the works uh, of the future, this is known, but also because science is really a path towards empowerment of people. In science, you, you make the experience to, to know something which uh, does not exist, and your, yourself, each one of us, has to put a piece of uh, his capacity, his or her capacity, to build the new we did not uh, experience before. So I think that uh, uh, this path is a crucial point for the education. And indeed, in the Italia Domani Plan, which is the project uh, of Italy in the, funded by the Next Generation EU, we introduced many projects uh, to increase uh, STEM uh, teaching. It is um, funded with uh, more than one billion of euro, this part, to train teachers and to change the curricula in, uh, for STEM, or uh, to invest to offer more places uh, for um, children between zero and three years old, uh, more or less four, uh, four billion and six hundred million, and also mm, many funds to mm, promote uh, the time of school during all the day and to invest in new infrastructure, for it, in particular in the south region of Italy, where the, the school are not so, uh, they, they are not organized to ensure uh, uh, courses also in the afternoon, but only during the morning. How do you compare the situation of women in Italy to that of other countries? And while we are uh, waiting for the answer, I just want to remind you that if you're following online, either on Facebook or YouTube, that you can also ask questions in the comment section of the page, and then Julian is gonna pass them on to me. Okay, uh, let me say that uh, uh, pandemic, as I mm, told uh, you before, pandemic highlighted uh, the fact that uh, women are m m more and more the victims of all crises in all parts of the world. But at the same time that uh, uh, women can represent the already, they, they unlock the potential and the energy for all the societies everywhere. And now, uh, Mm, also in uh, the international debate, uh, it's clear that we have to promote a, a global agenda to empower women and to assume gender equality. And indeed, one of the SDG goal, the fifth goal for, towards the agenda 2030 is uh, uh, on gender equality and women's empowerment. We cannot uh, achieve a sustainable development without the contribution of women and without promoting and uh, uh, achieving the full equality in each part of the, of the world. In Italy, we have uh, some, uh, uh, let me say that uh, we, mm, we did uh, um, many things to improve the condition of women. Our democracy is based on gender equality, and this I think that it is a good point to be underlined because um, an important point to be underlined, our democracy is not complete. It requires, uh, strongly requires, as a necessary condition the achievement of, the, uh, of our gender equality. And so uh, we, we have not uh, 
achieve the reach the, the final goal, but uh, we are uh, on the path. And uh, concerning, for, uh, for instance, some uh, fundamental rights, Italy is, uh, uh, we have uh, the right to access, to access to the health system, for instance. This is an important point. Or uh, uh, we have um, some rights for the maternity, but during the five, five months of the maternity, uh, this is another important point we have uh, in Italy. We have access to education, for, and this is not uh, the same everywhere. So to have uh, the universal access to school and to education for, uh, for girls and boys uh, uh, with the same opportunities. On the other end, uh, we, we, are, uh, we are not uh, so uh, well placed, let me say, uh, concerning the women. Uh, um, involved in the women's employment and also uh, the presence of women uh, at, the, at the top uh, of the responsibility, both in the public and the private sectors. We so there is a glass ceiling that is there. Is very yes, big. even if uh, we are trying to, to remove it, and we are, we are now making some new um, steps, uh, but uh, it is not completely broken. And one of the points that is sadly very uh, recurrent in the news is uh, gender violence and domestic violence. Is Italy doing worse than other nations in a comparative way? Because it seems such a pervasive uh, problem. It comes up almost every day. There is uh, news oh. of, of women victim of... Uh, no, it, it is a problem everywhere, in every part of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually, we are investing mm, public uh, policies and funds uh, to, to fix uh, this uh, tragedy, which is a tragedy, and uh, it is really a violation of uh, human rights. Uh, we promoted uh, a strategy for, uh, uh, to fight against uh, male violence against women uh, following the uh, Istanbul Convention. We are strongly connected to the Istanbul Convention, so the strategy we are implementing is made by four pillars, prevention, protection, prosecution of perpetrators, and also the promotion for a, a new free life for victims of violence, women and victims of violence, uh, in a freedom condition, and uh, also to, um, to fight against uh, the economic violence, which is one of the aspects of the violence, as well as the physical, the sexual, and also the psychological violence. And we decided to make stable also the, the, the funds for the civil society, which is committed to, to help victims, and to, uh, but also for a, a new governance, and we promoted, we are promoting a new governance, uh, governance uh, of the action against uh, violence uh, with a the so-called intersectionality method, so all the ministers are involved in this uh, observatory cabinet to decide uh, the action, and uh, also with an integrating and mainstreaming vision for all the policies, not only uh, concerning prevention, in which the education plays a fundamental role, but also to protect victims and also to promote uh, a life uh, with the, mm, the possibility to report and to find a, a perspective out of the violence. This is an important point. Uh, you, you mentioned the, the measures that Italy has for uh, the protection and uh, uh, the assistance during maternity. I believe they are among the best available in the Western world, but they can also fire back, because I know that, for example, many private companies hesitate to hire women of yeah. fertile age because they know that if they're going to get pregnant two, three times, they become a liability to, to, the, to the company. How do you negotiate that to guarantee the woman's right to uh, be with the baby, uh, to give the time that uh, the baby needs in the crucial first month, and then at the same time uh, avoid this discrimination that is present, especially at higher level, but not only? Uh, yes, uh, uh, you are right. Uh, this is a, a, a crucial point, uh, and it is a crucial point of the Family Act uh, policies. Uh, indeed, I in Italy, uh, to hire a woman is more expensive than 
than to hire a man. Because uh, if uh, a woman uh, becomes a mother, the company has to pay a part of the contribution, for instance, for the and then uh, the company has to replace this woman. And this is uh, one of the obstacles to, to the employment of women and to, uh, to promote uh, uh, women's uh, career in companies. So how to change this paradigm? We decided to, uh, to, to remove this obstacle, so to remove the expense, the, the, the cost for the companies uh, concerning the maternity. So the state is going to exactly. Be this is the, 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 the part included in the Family Act. And then we introducing also a mandatory paternity leave. That means that also men will be uh, obliged to stay at home as well as women. Will the couple have a choice of which of the two parents? Yes, there is a part of a mandatory part, which is uh, for them. And then uh, a flexible way, this is the vision, it is not uh, already in act. Uh, they, they can choose, and if they decide to take the leaves uh, both, they have some advantages. So it is also some uh, division to, inc to encourage. Activity. There is a part which is a mandatory, mm -hmm. and the other part which uh, is uh, uh, an encouragement to the involvement both of father and mother uh, in uh, in educating and in, uh, in taking care of their children. And uh, the other pa part which is very important is to give incentives to company to promote uh, new. Mm, form of flexible works for parents, not only for women, but for parents, and also to, uh, to promote the women's career. So uh, if you uh, have uh, more women in a higher position and with good policies for maternity, for instance, you can get some uh, points uh, for the gender certificate, gender equality certificate, and the, uh, the companies will have some advantages from the point of view of tax benefits or to apply in the public procurement. And uh, uh, we introduce also a new tool, uh, which is a, an economic incentives for a mother to enter, uh, to, to come to work after maternity. So more money. To reintroduce them into exactly, the workforce. Exactly, to reintroduce themselves. To avoid them to be out of the uh, job market for too long time. Thank you. Chiara, do we have questions? You can read it, Chiara, if you have it in front of you. Do I read it? Do I read it? Do I read it? So we have a question from Caterina, uh, studying biology here at NYU. How do you believe that women can contribute to the mitigation of environmental issues and of climate change in Italy? Women can contribute to, to any challenges because uh, we need the contribution to, uh, of women. I think that uh, the crucial point is that uh, women are really different in tackling uh, all the emergencies with respect to men. So uh, we need to, um, to build, um, let me say, uh, governance uh, uh, management of these new challenges, including both the vision and the perspective of women and men. On the other hand, uh, at least in Italy, we uh, have uh, many women employed in uh, fields related to the effects of the ecological transition, the, the climate change, and so involved in the uh, ecological transition, uh, in particular uh, in the fields of in the entrepreneurship, uh, we have many women involved, uh, employed in these fields. So we have to reskill them with the new skills which are now necessary to face these. Uh, uh, this challenge, but and this uh, the point of education comes once again as a crucial point, in particular the education in technological and STEM fields. And on the other side, I, I think that uh, women um, have the, let me say, the resilience uh, uh, attitude to, to face 
these new challenges. And so I think that they, they can be also a source of uh, uh, opportunities for the society, also in particular in the climate change. They, they can be, they must be agents of change also in this uh, ecological transition. Okay, let me say that in some sense, uh, women can tackle complexity better than men. At least I, I see this uh, you know, with my students, and so <laughs> I think that this is a complex challenge. Thank you. Uh, I will not object, otherwise I'm afraid that she's gonna ask me some question in mathematics, <laughs> and I'm gonna make a complete fool of myself. Professor Hello. Forgash. Uh, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, it was very strong and illuminating. Um, there were just a couple of things that you didn't mention. I wonder if I could ask you about. Um, the first is, uh, because of the um, demographic problem, it's also a problem of an aging population. What about women uh, now in their 40s or 50s, some of whom still have school-aged children who find themselves having to look after an elderly parent. This use tends to fall disproportionately on women rather than on men. And uh, there is a problem in Italy, which is if you're not wealthy and you can't afford a private banante, what can you get from the state in order to support elder care? Um, is this part of the Family Act? And, or should it be something that you need to work on? Um, and the other question I have is about the relationship between the demographic problem and immigration. Uh, I mean, some demographers, Massimo Livibacci, for instance, has been arguing for years that uh, if you have a more open policy towards immigration, you can partly solve the denatality problem because immigrants have more children, they're the future of the nation. Um, and yet you're still having restrictions on immigration, um, problems of immigrants or foreign-born citizens getting uh, Italian citizenship. So should this also be part of the family uh, policy in Italy? Uh, making immigration more accessible. Thank you. So, yes, the first part is uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, let me say that there are two sides uh, of the problem. One, from the one side, uh, we have to implement the so-called uh, active aging policies in our country. And uh, this is one of the is a part of a strategy we are implementing also to the, the, the Italian Domani Plan, um, improving and uh, the inf social infrastructure to care the older, but at the same time to promote their protagonism. Concerning in particular uh, women, we see uh, a problem that uh, uh, we, we have now the results uh, of a previous uh, experience of a uh, of careers of women with the uh, stop and go in their lives. Uh, mm, or, and so now we have uh, the problem of the women who are mm, just uh, uh, employed, uh, with uh, not employed, but uh, that uh, they are dedicated to the unburdened, mm, to the unpaid burden care in families, in particular for the older. And so uh, we have the problem to support them and also in the old ages, this is a, a problem. And um, as well as we are implementing the services for children, we are now also implementing the services and the infrastructure for caregiver, to help caregiver uh, in the families. And there is also a new law uh, recognizing the role of caregivers in families to avoid that it is only made by women with the unpaired um, with the unpaired uh, burden for them for them and the families. On the other side, the, the the point of the immigration. This is a crucial point. I think that uh, immigration not could helps helps uh, the demographic in increase of a country. Uh, we I am convinced that uh, we have to change our law, so to, to give uh, the citizenship uh, to children after the school, during the school, so that the school, the education, builds 
also the citizens, citizenship for a person. That is referred to as use culture, that if somebody from... No, now it is, no, 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 no. Now it is not, a, this, there is no this law now, this law now in Italy. I am a supporter of this no, <laughs> proposal, but, but yes, I think that, that, yes, I am favorable, yeah. So that, that any child that completes a cycle of school... Or a certain yes, number there, of are different, school, uh, there are different yeah. uh, opportunities, but I think that to complete the first cycle of school, you can get uh, uh, yes, the passport. Yeah. But okay, but let me also say that this is not really the problem, because we see in the data that also uh, uh, immigrating families change their, let me say, uh, behavior concerning the birth. So we have uh, the same decrease of the rate birth in Italian native families and also in the immigrating families. In the, the immigrants. Right to stop making children. Yes, uh, this is a really, and this uh, shows that uh, shows that the problem is the perspective of the society, and so this is the point to change the rules of our society, to to, to invest in uh, education. So, so the Family Act is um, dedicated to all, not only to native, and in this indeed the uh, Assegno Unico Universale is for all not only for Italian people. So it's not only for Italian citizens, no. but for people who live on Italian territory. Uh, yes, uh, with the, uh, we live in Italian territory, or the, uh, that, uh, who works Working. with us. No. Do we have any other question? Well, I thank you for your attention. It's, uh, the minister is catching a plane later tonight at JFK, oh, yeah. but we have some time for a reception upstairs. We can even do a reception, can you believe it? Because we have a garden with flowers that we planted in honor of the minister. So stop by if you can. She might have to leave sooner, but to say hi. For those of you who are not on our mailing list, use that little card to write down your email and we'll keep you informed of our events, especially as soon as we will be able to make, as we used to do in the past, about 100 a year. So there is from music to concerts to theater to cinema. Thank you so much. Minister Bonetti for being here with us. While I was listening to you, I remember that a few years ago there was a polemic and their um, papers and the opposition was saying, il governo dei professori, with a sort of disdain. You know, like the, 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 but I am I, a part of I, well, I think, I think, <laughs> the, the category. And I don't think it's a defense of the category. I think that sometimes it's better to have il governo dei professori del governo degli asini. <laughs> and you're a proof of that. And uh, thank you for being here with us to share with us this Primo giorno di una primavera that we hope it's also symbolic of, the, of this future ahead of us. Thank you very much, Minister Bonetti, and thanks to all of you. And we have presents for you. We have little presents in her bio, official bio. The minister says that she's the mother of Tommaso and Chiara. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you for being here with us. Thank you.